Hi everyone, it's Josh here. Uh, I'm just doing a quick video on how to uh, simulate 2D plane stress. Um, also, a um, using the shell tool. Uh, so, what a the classical um, example of this is a um, a notched plate um, or something with a hole in it, where the um, stresses are in the plane. So, what we start off doing is we um, we draw a sketch in the XY plane. It has to be in the XY plane. The Z plane is not used. So you can see here we've got this plate 100 mil wide and the notch is 100 mil in. The hole is 100 mil in and there's at least 100 mil space between them. Um, if you understand St. Venon's principle, you'll see why that those sizes are there. So I do the sketch and then go up to this fill tool and you select the sketch and then it will fill uh, that and create that as a surface so that becomes a 3d surface as opposed to just a sketch that's all we have to do um, to get started um, we go to application simulate and the first thing we do is we go to model setup and uh, under the advanced tab uh, we can then select 2D plane stress. It queries for a coordinate system. We select that one and it queries for the surface and we um, select our surface and we hit OK. Um, so the next thing we can do is we can start to look at um, applying constraints. So I'm going to constrain one end and I've done that just in the X and Y. So we're not calculating in the Z, so there's no option for that. Something to remember is an edge um, that's uh, selected here actually represents that end face, not just a corner. And so the whole face um, is um, constrained together and um, we assume that there's no gradient of stress across that thin face. So this is quite accurate when it comes to thin plates for that reason. Um, I've put a load on the end here of 500 newtons. Um, so we're 100 mil wide and I'm going to make it 5 mil thick with the 500 newtons. So we're expecting this average stress of 1 MPa. Um, if I go 500 over the 500, we should get 1. So we'll see what happens. All right, the other thing we've got to do is um, apply thickness to this. So we go to the shell tool, we hit shell. Um, it queries the surface, so we select that surface and we can put in our, our thickness and that should appear up in here in idealization. So you can see here I've selected the surface, uh, five mil, and I've applied the material in here. So you can see we've got a five mil shell. Um, it um, previews it here, but um, when you simulate it, you'll only see a flat surface. Yeah, just uh, bring up the front view. There we go. Um, so we've done our material, we've done our load and constraint, and um, so we then move on to analysis. So we would go over to analysis and you just um, set up a new static. Um, there's no special settings. Um, you run that and you'll see how quick it is. Um, yeah, it takes one second. And when we preview that, we'll show the um, Uh, I'm not sure whether you can see this. Um, um, I'm not sure how the whether you can see this screen. Uh, let me see if I can. Hopefully you can see that now. So we've got this um, one minus stress and um, 
we've got the different gradients this is just the, the default mesh if we go into the queries we can see here we've got around about 1 MPA 1 MPA all through this area here it, we've got concentrations in here concentrations up in here um, and out here again around about 1 MPA which is what we're expecting so you can always do some mesh refinement in these areas um, to get a better accuracy but from different perspectives or different um, types of stress and you, you, your nominal sort of stress should still be this, uh, around about 1 MPA so it makes a lot of sense and uh, when you view that you'll see you're viewing that assuming that the Z component is constant so uh, so yeah and uh, if you ran a 3d analysis you'll see how much quicker the 2d actually is alrighty hopefully that's helped everybody See you later.